Hey YouTube, Ed here with Jack of All Trades. Uh, welcome to another video. So today we're going to do a review. Uh, we're quite obviously going to review the Harbor Freight Titanium uh, Unlimited 200 welder. Uh, but before we get into that, please, if you like this channel and you like this content and you like what you see here, uh, hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, hit me with some comments, ding that notification bell so you can make sure that you don't miss out on any other videos. And, and that's all I'm ever asking for for support is for subscribers. I'm not asking for money or anything like that. I just I would like to build up my subscriber base. Uh, I see I'm now at a little over 700 subscribers. Yay! Uh, which is kind of a bit of a milestone, you know, break 700. As soon as I hit 1,000 subscribers, we're going to do some kind of fun little giveaway. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but we'll do something. So let's let's talk about the welder a little bit. Actually, I'm going to do two products here. I've got the welder and I bought the inexpensive welding cart to go with it. So we're going to kind of cover both of them today, but primarily we're going to be focusing on the welder. So uh, it's the it's the Titanium Unlimited 200. It's a multi-process machine. A multi-process machine will do basically all of the welding processes that are most common. It will do MIG or wire feed welding. It will do stick welding. It will do spool gun welding for aluminum. And it will also do TIG welding. So it'll do all of those processes, which was a selling point for me because I haven't TIG welded since I was in high school and I want to kind of get back into it again. Uh, I've welded professionally for the better portion of my life. I've been a fabricator for many, many years. I've built things like industrial staircasing and ladding, ladders and catwalking. Uh, I've built bridge abutments. I have made those those big interstate sign trusses that you see that holds the signs that say the next town is so many miles away as you're coming out of big cities and the rest, next rest stop is so many miles away. I've built those big overhead sign trusses. Uh, I've built uh, large roller style gates. I've built spiral tear scare, staircases. Uh, I've built trailers. I've been I've been welding and fabricating for the better part of my life. So I've used some welders. I've used everything from uh, Millermatic 190s and 200s to the Shopmaster 300 to the 400 and 450 industrial machines and pulse machines. I've used Lincolns. I've used Esob. I've used Millers. I've used a lot of machines, and I think I have a pretty good foundation now. Admittedly. I'm a little bit out of practice. I haven't been working as a welder for quite a few years now. Uh, kind of got out of that game, but I still do my own home welding, and I'm I'm not as good as I used to be. I'm, I don't have those robotic beads anymore. Take that into account when you're when you're watching my welding. I am it, it's a pra it's a perishable skill, and you have to practice. If you don't keep up on it, you're going to lose it. So let's let's move the camera down here. Let's talk about some of the forms and the functions and what comes with the machine, and then we'll get into my overall impressions of it. And I'll try and do I cut up some scrap. I'll try and do a little bit of welding for you today too. All right. So let's talk a little bit first about uh, general fit and finish and appearance. Uh, overall, other than the hideous lime green color, which is actually kind of growing on me a little bit. Fit and finish of the welder and the actual construction and build of the welder, it's not bad. Uh, it's no better or worse than and than the Lincolns or the Millers or the Esobs. And I've looked at the Lincolns and the Millers and the Esobs before I bought this one, trying to justify the extra money, and I couldn't do it. But, you know, fit and finish and polish of this thing, it's not horrible. For a $700 welder, I really don't have anything to complain about. Uh, this handle is metal. These plastic covers on the front and the back are plastic, quite obviously, and that's kind of the sign of the times. A lot of things are plastic now, and that's just the way they're building things these days. Uh, if we look over here on this side, we can see we've got some plastic hinges up here. I'm not a big fan of plastic hinges, but these look like they're pretty well built and they're pretty beefy. Uh, relatively impressed with how heavy these hinges are, and they, they seem like they're going to last. Uh, they are just hinges for the cover door, and it's not like I'm going to be setting anything heavy on this thing. It's and as long as you're, as long as you're not stupid with it, they should last. I don't see any reason why not. Go down here, and let's. This is your typical pull-up slide latch to to open the door to get you into your wire feeder and your rollers. Uh, again, the the latch is plastic. One thing kind of impressive to me is that this door 
it's actually some fairly stout material i mean it's it's still got some wiggle to it but you know for what it is it's a door and it, it's it'll function just fine they actually took the time to put a a, a rolled edge on this and bend it three ways to give it some more strength and some rigidity they put this one extra little bend in here and that helps out quite a bit so overall the the fit and finish of the machine it's I'd say above par for what you would expect for a seven hundred dollar welder. Uh, it's 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 just not bad. It's it's perfectly adequate, and I'm very very satisfied with it. Nice little touch. They put a preliminary settings chart in here. Uh, these are by no means set in stone, and these are just starting points. But to be honest with you, they're pretty close. They're not bad. Uh, I've I've played with just using exactly the settings that they give you, and they and they weld just fine. And there's some fine tuning and some tweaking you can do. But the settings are actually, from what I found, pretty doggone close. And you could, if you don't know welding real well or you don't have a ton of welding experience, you can completely get away with going with just their recommended settings and getting the job done. Uh, I'm, I'm fairly impressed with the accuracy thus far of the machine's uh, setup chart. Now, I've only had this machine a little over a month, so I haven't obviously been through the whole chart, but from what I've been using, it's pretty doggone close. Nice little touch that they add there, and it's in a spot that you're not going to lose it. Uh, it's not on a separate card or anything like that that's going to get thrown away. So, but I do see that the the decal looks like it's starting to bubble up here. Actually, that's not even the decal bubbling up. Ha, huh, look what I did. I didn't peel off the little protective film. Well, you guys are going to get to be the first. Oh, how satisfying. Ooh. Should we do it on the other side? Let's do it on the other side. Satisfaction alert. Look out. Here it comes. Oh. <laughs> there you go. How satisfying was that? So yes, the uh, the fit and finish of the machine is it's it's like I said, I would say it's above standard for what you'd expect for a seven hundred dollar welder. Front panel on this machine is exactly what I would want. It's simple. There's not a lot of stupid stuff that you have to do in this. You don't have to go into any sub menus or sub programs to get anything done. You've got three knobs and two switches up here. That's all you need to get it done. It's it's you don't need to be a rocket science to use this machine. You've got a wire feed, you've got your voltage, you've got your inductance, you've got your mode switch. Down is for MIG or wire feeding, center is for TIG, and up is for stick. Doesn't get any simpler than that. Uh, you've got 2T, 4T here, uh, 2T and 4T. If you don't know what 2T and 4T is, 2T, your MIG welding, and this is only for MIG welding. 2T, squeeze the trigger and hold it, you're going to weld. You release the trigger, you're stopping welding. Switch it to 4T, you squeeze the trigger to start welding, and then you release it, it's going to keep welding. And then you weld away, weld away, weld away, and then you get done with your bead. You squeeze it and release it again. It's going to stop welding. I don't know why they have that function on this machine. If this was an industrial machine where you were welding long beads, and when I say long beads, I'm talking feet worth of beads in a continuous pass, I can see this being useful. For the average garage home guy, not seeing it. But it's there, and it's a function they probably didn't have to put in, and it is it is there. Uh, you got three LEDs here. You got a power LED, an alarm LED, and a work LED. I don't exactly know what the work LED does, to be honest with you. I've never even noticed it if it's on or off or whatever. Very very simple. You got a digital readout display here, which is uh, very easy to read, and it's there's no buttons to push to get into sub menus none of that kind of crap it's just straightforward dumb guy welding and i'm a dumb guy and this is the kind of machine that i need 
Uh, the only the only complaint I would have about the knobs is that it doesn't take a whole lot of movement on these knobs to get those numbers to move. Uh, and if you're re- if you're one of these Type A people and you want that th- thing to be at 16.3, uh, you just bump it a little bit and you're running past it. It's like trying to stop on the zeros on the gas pump. It's a little it's a little tough to do, but it's a it's not a barn burner. Get over it. Um, it's close enough, and it, and they and they work really really well. Uh, what do we got on the back? Okay, on the back, pretty simple. Not much here. You've got your power cord, you've got your gas input, you've got your 120 or 240 selection switch. Uh, this is one thing that the Vulcan doesn't have. It has the Vulcan welder. If you plug it into 110, it automatically senses that you're in 110, and it it just switches it internally. Uh, this one's actually got a physical tactile switch that you have to flip. Uh, it wasn't worth an extra $300 to me to have that auto switching function. And your on and off switch. Very, very simple, very, very basic. Nothing much back here. With the machine, you get the power, quarter, power cord converter to let you get from 110 to, or from 220 to 110. You get a ground clamp. Obviously, I don't know of anybody that sells a welder without a ground clamp. You get your you get your your MIG torch for MIG welding. You get a you get a stick welding torch or stinger lead whatever you want to call it. And you also get your TIG torch. Uh, this is a very inexpensive TIG torch. You can see I haven't even taken this out of the box yet, so I haven't started TIGging with this yet. That'll be a later video. This machine will not run a high-frequency start torch. You only, the only option you have is for scratch start. Uh, what else do you get? You also get the regulator. Admittedly, this is not the greatest regulator in the world. Uh, one thing I've noticed with the regulator is no matter where you set your regulated pressure, after a period of time of welding, at least in my case on this particular machine, you have to go back and recheck it because it will steadily climb up on you. Uh, for example, if I had it set at about 15 and then I go and I weld a whole bunch of welds and then I come back and I check it, it seems to have climbed up to about 20, 22, or even 25. So for some reason, this regulator wants to cascade and climb on you a little bit. I don't know why that is, but it is a cheap regulator and it will it'll get you going. I'll replace it eventually, but there's no point in in fixing something that isn't really truly broke. It's just a little bit of an annoyance. Not a great regulator, but it's there, and it will get you started. Uh, if I have to make a gripe and a bitch, the regulator is not the greatest, but it'll get you going. It certainly isn't certainly isn't worth basing your buying decision on. And that's pretty much what you get with your machine. You you also get your instruction book, which that's usually where those instruction books go. But one thing that's actually kind of handy is this uh, quick start card. It tells you how to hook up the various leads for the different processes. And it gives you a little quick start guide on, on some basic stuff on how to run the machine. So uh, that's kind of nice and handy to have. But it is what it is. Okay, let's look inside the... Uh, the wire house here so you've got a you've got a roller set of rollers your power rollers for your wire feeding uh, honestly this is a pretty nice setup it's all it's all metal I think it's cast uh, it's probably cast aluminum if I had to wager a guess uh, but it's it's all cast so it's metal uh, the rollers are actually pretty doggone nice uh, here's a roller over here these aren't some kind of cheap plastic roller they're actually metal rollers uh, they're very well labeled I, I, I see no problem with them uh, the the roller roller setup itself seems to be very very positive very easy to control very easy to work uh, very solidly built and I've had zero problems with this uh, something you need to know if you are going to run a spool gun there's a switch inside here for, let me see, make sure I get that on frame. 
There's a switch inside here for running your spool gun or for running MIG. For running MIG, you got to have it in the down setting. For running the spool gun, you got to have it up. Make sure you're aware of that if you're going to run a spool gun, and this will run a spool gun. Uh, I haven't bought it. That is the one thing you don't get with the welder is the spool gun, uh, but you don't get it with the Vulcan either. So, uh, all the, everything fit together really nice. It went together really easy. The connectors for the ground clamp, uh, they're, they're a half turn system. Uh, they, they go in, you turn them and lock them into place and they, they snug down and it, it's really well positively seated. Uh, same with the, with the uh, positive side for the spool gun or the, uh, the stinger for stick welding. If you TIG weld, you put your ground on the positive and then you put your TIG torch in the negative. Uh, but all these connections are really nice. The The rubber coating on here is a little thin and chintzy. It's not super great, but again, we're not talking. This is not a machine for an industrial setting. This is a machine for the home garage guy, uh, the guy that wants to do some light stuff or maybe a light job shop, very, very light, or maybe, a, maybe as a portable machine. Uh, on a side note, I have run this machine using my Predator 6500 watt generator. The same generator I keep on hand for storm emergencies and stuff like this. And it actually welds on the generator pretty doggone nicely. So this thing can be extremely portable. You can take that generator with you. This, this whole unit only weighs 40 pounds and you could take it pretty much anywhere you wanted to fire up the welder and weld anywhere you like. Uh, with the use of a generator. So that's another nice option, and you really only need the 110 outlet to get it done. So, yeah, I have, that's kind of a side note. I, I digress a little bit. I have run this off my Predator Predator generator, and it's granted, it's the big one. It's it's the big generator. The damn thing will run my whole house. It will, it will weld on it just fine. So overall impressions of the machine, I like it. I like the simplicity of it. I like the fit and finish of it. I like the construction of it. It seems like it's very, very well built for what it is, and it's a $700 multi-process welder. So let's let's talk a little bit about this cart. Uh, this is the this is the Harbor Freight cart. It's the less expensive one. Uh, I didn't see the need to buy the the $120 multi-drawer cart, I just don't have a use for that. It's not that important to me, so I bought the $40 cart. This, let me tell you, you are not going to build this cart for 40 bucks. There's no chance in hell. You cannot do it. You can't buy the casters, all the metal, and your time is worth something. You can't build this cart for 40 bucks. And for 40 bucks, this is, I would go so far as to say this is probably one of the better deals at Harbor Freight if you are looking for a very basic welding cart to set your welder on. You, you, I'll say it again, you can't build this cart for 40 bucks. Between your time and the materials and the fasteners and the casters, it's just not going to happen. It's got a shelf. Uh, of course, it's got a lower shelf and it's got an upper shelf to hold the welder. Now, you will see right there, I welded a piece of angle iron onto here because the titanium welder is a little too big for the cart. Uh, this, this cart was basically designed for one of the Chicago Electric scrap iron, chinesium, garbage welders. God damn. Whatever you do, don't buy one of those. Please don't buy one of those. I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. It's a bunch of crap. Don't buy one. Hate them. This welder's legit. Spend the extra scratch and at least get the titanium wire welder. But I like this one. Anyway, I digress. The titanium welder doesn't fit on the, on the top shelf very well. So I had to, well, the first thing I did, this used to be a lip that was bent down. I straightened it out to to extend the shelf a little bit. I uh, just took a hammer, a couple of hammers, and I just banged it out straight. It's kind of rough. It's kind of ugly, but you know what? It gets the job done. I don't care. Sue me. So the first thing I did was I took this lip that was bent down here, and all it was was a little grab handle for you to be able to grab so you could pull it around a little easier. I bent it up. Then I welded this piece of angle iron on here 
to capture the welder so it didn't want to slide off all the time. And then, of course, I had two by two angle is all I had, so then I had to cut a bunch of divots in here to make room for, for these three sockets. A little bit of grinder work is all that was. And now I have this cart set up to fit the titanium. So if you're going to buy them both, understand right now the titanium welder does not fit the Chicago Electric cheap-ass welding cart. It's a little too big. I, I rolled it around like that for the better part of two weeks, and then I finally said enough, and I, I fixed it up just a little bit. It, it's actually a pretty well-constructed cart. I, it, it'll probably last my lifetime. Other than that, uh, the, I, I, would, I would recommend it. If you want to get a cart, it's worth the 40 bucks. So I would venture to say that this little cheap-ass welding cart they've got is probably one of the best buys in the store because it's, you, just, you just simply cannot produce this for 40 bucks on your own. You, you can't hardly buy the metal for that. It's, it is what it is. It assembles fairly easy. I assembled it in about 20 minutes. There's lots of nuts and bolts, and I, just, I used a power gun to put it all together. And it, The one thing I will say about the cart is the instructions absolutely suck. Uh, you're, you're going to swear at the instructions a little bit, but have a beer, suck it up, and drive on, and put your cart together. So I guess now proof is in the pudding. Let's, uh, I've got some scraps over here. Let's, let's, let's weld some stuff together, and let's, let's see how this thing welds. Uh, I'm plugged into 110 here. First off, in the, let, me, let me say this. I've been using nothing but 110. I haven't used 220 at all. Uh, I don't have 220 all in my garage, so 110 is what, what I've got to use. I haven't tripped the circuit breaker. I haven't tripped the GFI. I haven't hit the duty cycle on this thing, and I've got no complaints with how it's welding on 110. Get that out of the way. Uh, you can very, This is a very functional machine on 110 voltage. It works very, very well. Fan is a little loud on this thing, admittedly. It's, it's not the quietest fan. It's obviously moving quite a bit of air, so it's, it, it's not the quietest fan in the world. We'll, we'll just say that. So we're gonna run, we're gonna run on their settings, and we're gonna run it as if we were working uh, 11 gauge steel, which on their settings is 180, 180 on the wire speed and an 18. 180 on the wire speed and an 18 on the voltage. And then inductance, they say anywhere from 5 to 10. Uh, I'm not going to get into inductance today. You, you do your own research on inductance. All right, I've got some scrap here. So let's just uh, let's just do a let's just do a butt weld. We're just gonna butt weld this together. Let's get a tack on it. This thing actually tacks pretty nice. Those, are, those aren't some bad tacks. Tacks pretty good. So let's just do a butt weld on this thing. Not a bad weld. Welpers. If you don't have welpers, get yourself a set of welpers. Like I said, I'm a little out of practice, so don't criticize me too much. I got a little undercut right there, but uh, we've got really good penetration, good heat. It's got a good sound. I'm actually going to turn my inductance up a little bit. Not a bad weld. Certainly plenty adequate for somebody who's doing some garage welding. 
So let me grab a couple of pieces of this and let's just do a basic fillet weld for you. Again, we'll tack it. Okay, so now we'll just do a basic fillet weld for you. Make sure that's in frame. We're going to do this one on a slight drag. We're going to do a, a drag weld on this one. And I'm going to stop before I hit the tack here because I want you to see how well it's melting. There is nothing wrong whatsoever with that weld. Nothing wrong with that at all. Is that in frame? Yes. Okay. So let's take another two pieces of that same scrap. And now I'm going to, I'm going to do a push weld now. Same thing, I'm going to do a fillet, but I'm going to push it instead of drag it. Again, there is nothing wrong with that weld at all. Let's try a plug weld. Let's just see what a plug well, how this will plug weld. See no problem whatsoever with a plug weld. Let's do a let's do a fillet weld on a on a Narrow prof narrower profile. I mean, really, this is 316 steel. I've got good heat transfer through, so I know I'm penetrating. Nothing wrong with that weld whatsoever. So just for grins, let's see what it'll do on a vertical down. There's a vertical down for you. Hope you can see that. And boy, I haven't done a vertical up for a long time. That's a whole new kind of thing. Let's see what I can do. Let's see if I can get a vertical up done. Like I said, I haven't done an up for quite a while. Let's see if I can get that done. Yeah, not my best work, but you can see I got a little, I got a little inclusion right there. That's that's on me. That's not the welder. It vertical ups just fine, apparently. And I am way out of practice, so don't blame the welder for my inadequacies. I am really out of practice. So the wire, the MIG welding, the wire welding aspect of it, the machine works very, very well. Very, very well. I have zero complaints with it whatsoever. I am going to try 
and take the camera off and I'm going to try and shine it through my helmet so you can see the arc. Uh, let's see how this goes. All right, let's see if I can get this done. So I am holding my helmet, my phone, in my helmet, my, yeah, my phone in my helmet, and I'm one-handing this. So let's see if I can get this done. Turned out pretty better than I thought it would. Nothing wrong with that weld. So all in all, the weld's pretty good. Very impressed with it. Uh, one thing I didn't touch was the gun quality. Um, admittedly, this is not a Tweco gun. It's a little little light, it's plastic. Uh, the trigger seems very positive and it uses the smaller style cones, but all these things are sourceable at Harbor Freight. Uh, also the same cones that happen to be used by Hobarts, uh, the Lincolns. So the parts are common and they're easy to find. The gun is a little on the small side. Now, I've got big sausage finger meat hooks so the the gun quality, I mean, the gun could be a little bigger, could be a little more robust, but again, we are not talking about a machine here that we're going to be using in an industrial welding setting. We are talking about a machine that you and me and Joe Snuffy and every other guy in the country who wants to weld some stuff in their garage or do some little projects or build their kid a go-kart like I'm doing or whatever, this is going to be plenty adequate. You, you're not watching this video to buy... A machine that you are going to use in an industrial welding setting. The machine tacks well, it welds well, it holds a stable arc, it's got good penetration and considering you know I'm running I'm running eighth inch material here or 11 gauge while well, this stuff's this is heavier than 11 gauge that's I think that's 3 16 and and this stuff is 3 16 I know that is. It's 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 doing really good on 110 and I'm sure if I had it on 220 and I wanted to pump it up I could get 100% penetration all day long on this thing with 316 steel and not have an issue so I, I'm running on 110 and I'm trying to keep the voltages down so I don't trip circuit breakers and stuff but there again I've never tripped a circuit breaker with this thing and I've been welding with it a lot well there it is the the Harbor Freight uh, Ultimate 200 multi-process welder I'm sorry I didn't wasn't able to show you some TIG, and I'm sorry I wasn't able to show you stick welding. I'm not going to stick weld inside my shop because it'll smoke the shop up something fierce. And I have do not have pure argon, and I haven't set up the TIG machine yet. When I get to TIGging on this thing, I'll do a follow-up review on how the TIGging is working. And if I can maybe get out and do some stick welding and, and remember to video it. I have stick welded with it already. I just haven't. I just didn't even think to videotape it. I was helping a buddy out, so uh, that was more important. Overall, impressions of the machine. For a $700 welder, uh, it's above and beyond my expectations for fit and finish. It performs very, very well. Uh, I've only run it on 110, and the welding on the 110 is smooth. It's crisp. It makes good great beads it lays them down i get good penetration very very happy with the overall performance if i have to make a gripe i would say the regulator is a bit on the hokey side the gun itself a little bit light duty but again we're not in an industrial setting here if you're looking for an industrial welder this is not an industrial welder it's just not it's it's, it's not what it was designed for this is a home welder or a garage welder they they may call it a professional series. It welds like professional, but it is not an industrial setting machine. I can very easily see this machine at an auto mechanic shop where you maybe need to weld something up. Uh, I can see this machine on a farm. I can see this machine on or in somebody's garage for what I'm doing for light project work or just fun project work. Uh, I could see this machine being used as a portable rig 
but it's very portable it's very lightweight it will run off of a generator but this is primarily going to be for the home guy the hobbyist or the light commercial setting such as automotive maybe even a small engine shop something of that effect and would i buy it again absolutely would i recommend it to a friend it depends on what my friend wants to use it for if he's a guy like me and he's doing the kind of stuff i'm doing please i'll, I'll drive you there and i'll help you get it i mean it, it's I'm, I'm that confident in it it works really really well and i'm very very happy with it now ask me this in a year will it last we will find out i bought the two-year warranty on it so if it takes a crap on me I'm taking it back and I'll get another one. But so far, very, very happy with it. Ed here with Jack of All Trades. Thank you for riding along. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you make a decision on whether or not this is a machine that you want. And I will see you on the next video.